Hello, YouTubers. Sanction here. I'm sat here. I've got my coffee. And let's do a little project breakdown of my track, Hold Me Endless. If you're not familiar with the track, I'll play the intro through to the first drop, and then we'll discuss it. Here we go. There we go that's enough of that so let's talk about the first thing that i came up with which was this pluck line i'm actually going to bounce it down because it's so cpu heavy um, but we'll go and look at the patch in a second but basically this section here is the first thing that i came up with for the track and what that is it's a fairly simple patch actually it's two saw waves in uh, serum and one oscillator is detuned seven semitones above the other. So basically you're playing, when you play one note, it's playing a, a two finger chord. So um, if you look at the MIDI, I'm also playing a two finger chord with a shadowed bass. We look at the MIDI here, uh, which would be, um, let's get to where the filter's a little bit more open. Oh, so you can see that if I move, uh, on um, serum and you can see the keys and that's basically the line I came up with but hey, it's just two saw waves a little bit of unison like, well I say a little bit 16 uh, oscillates of unison and um, slightly detuned but not too much and the blend is like almost all down the center. Um, and then one the semitone above the other, a really sort of pingy envelope on there. Um, and that's kind of it. So if you imagine um, every time you hit a note, it's actually playing two notes. So when we play that D there, we turn off oscillator two, it's actually playing a D and a A, six, seven. But also in the chord, in that first chord, we're playing a G as well. So then seven notes above that takes you to a D. So the top half of the chord is uh, D, A, D, A, G, D. No, nope. can't play it. Got, not got enough fingers, you see? It's difficult. <laughs> but we're also shadowing the bass. Down here, it's playing a D and a G as well. So the actual chord will be, if you look down at the keyboard on Serum. That's the actual chord. And nobody's got time to play that, so we'll cheat it with an oscillator. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, that was the first thing I came up with. It's a relatively simple line, it's sort of a little bit EDM-ish. Um, and then that just kind of filters up throughout the intro. Maybe listen to the bounce. Just on a really plucky low pass filter. And as the filter opens up, um, you'll hear the um, decay on the sound gets longer as well. Simple patch, nothing to it. And then on top of that, there's this vocal section, which I'll solo for you. You can have a listen. Thank you for the email. Just hold me now Just hold me now So as you can hear, the vocal line is actual nonsense. Um, I'm using it more like an instrument, so I've just found lots of little bits of vocal that I quite liked. I just chop them in different places. I think that might actually be from a different vocal, and then I just pitched it to be the same pitch as the others. That's definitely from a different vocal. And what I've done, if you look in contact, I've actually set it to time machine mode, which means wherever I play on the keyboard, the timing will be the same. I've obviously tweaked the speed of that to match the BPM of the song. And then we're going to, it's not in high HQ mode for some reason, I normally do. But if you do that and turn four months off. But if you keep four months on, you get a cool. You get a slightly different effect. Um, but I left it I left it in low quality mode on this track for whatever reason. Um, again that feels like it's from a different vocal altogether. And I'll have just I'll have just pitched it to match the song. Or to match the other vocals. And yeah, do a little bit of programming, put them all together, and you get that bit of vocal together with the pluck sound. And that's really all that's going on in the intro, apart from a little drum track, which is literally a breakbeat. Um, oh, I've grouped, I've grouped all the percussion and the breaks into a group here called Breaks and Perks, so I can do some cool stuff later on. But mainly, the break on the intro is this. It's quite a typical old school one. It's been used a million times, and this on top of it. This is more of a sort of percussive thing. And the channel on there, just rolling off the bottom on that percussion one. And the break. Yep, just rolling off the bottom and boosting this 2K, because there's obviously something around 2K I wanted to cut through a bit nicer. Um, and then later on in the intro, on the drums, bringing up offbeat hi-hat. And then later on it also goes to a 4-4 section. With a kick and a clap, and they're just really simple. Sort of housey. Well, the kick's the kick we I use in the rest of the track. It's a fairly sort of boomy, housey kick. And that's kind of a, a lazy clap for the intro. Um, yeah, and then after the intro, have a little breakdown, so the filter drops back down. Uh, sorry, the intro has just a single repeated chord of the pluck filtering up and up and up and then when it drops it goes into the progression and then halfway through the progression that's when the vocal comes in and then at the end of that we have a build up using the first chord so that's just the first plucked chord filtering back up from down and it's chopped into a little bit of the vocals the sound effect down there just a little swooshy sound effect um, if you notice here, I automated the mute channel on the 
look because I didn't want any sound as in the, this last bar I didn't want any sound at all apart from the vocal What's up? just doing that um, so I automated the mute on the channel to be on at that point um, but you could do the same thing by bouncing it down and just like not having any audio past that point which is what's happened when I bounce it down here to save CPU so here it totally stops there's no delay or no reverb there and then it goes into the drop and the drums on this are quite interesting in so much that We've got um, this breaks and percussion channel that I talked about before, which is basically just all the hi-hats and the break beats together. And that helps us with the filtering on the intro, but it also means we can do things like this. We've got track spacer on, um, which I think I've showed in another video, but basically it's a side-chained EQ. Um, so you set a threshold or a ratio, sorry, like how much you want it to happen, and you set some frequency ranges. So I've got this going from 20 hertz to 20k, so basically the whole sound. And every time something plays on the trigger, it ducks out those frequencies on the thing you've got it as an insert on. And the trigger in this case is this channel, which is a group called Kick Snare, uh, which is exactly what you think it is. It's the kick and the snare. And I could have I could have used two different track spaces and not had the group, but yeah, easy enough. So basically, Kick Snare is just the kick and the snare. So if we look at the uh, drums as a whole and watch that track spacer on the brakes and percussion channel, you'll see when the kick hits and the snare hits, it starts ducking out those frequencies on the kick snare channel, on the um, brakes channel. But only, whatever that is, about 34%, there you go. And the reason I did that is because if you listen to the snare, it's a really high-pitched, weird, punchy snare. And I wanted it to really cut through the mix. So what I did with that, I haven't got the original sample in here anymore. It's, it's just a, a break beat -y, dub steppy kind of snare that I pitched right up. And I probably pitched it to be in key with the song as well. And um, just so there's no weird clash stuff, because obviously as you pitch it up, it starts to sound a bit more. You kind of hear the tune, it's like a ding. There's actually a note to the snare at that pitch. Um, but yeah, kind of simple. Later on, a ride comes in, just on the beat, on the four four. Nice and simple. Uh, and yeah, and the sounds in the drop, the bass sounds. Let's have a look at those. Let's actually let's solo them and we can have a listen to what the bass in the drop does. So yeah, the main portion of the sound is this, which is a serum patch. Let's have a look what that's doing. So, these two, they look quite complicated wavetables. And um, this one's not actually, if you look at that, it's kind of just four main uh, waves. Um, but we're not stepping through them anyway, if you, if you look at what's going on. It does, well, I don't think we are, no. No, none of my LFLs are stepping through, so basically, that's set to whatever the zero point of that wavetable is, and that's set to the highest point. We see the knobs there. And we've got this LFR here, set to trigger. So basically every time I play it, it starts playing that LFO and loops it round. And that is going to, oh, that is doing, oh, I bypassed it. Yeah, eventually had that, I originally had that wavetable doing that. But I obviously didn't like it, so I bypassed it. So the wavetable stays at the end. Um, this LFO is going to no, that's bypassed as well. So we've got LFO three, which is obviously um, a weird waveform that I programmed in, and that's going to our cutoff filter up here. You see, filter cut, and so basically, high on the LFO is. Um, the start point of this blue band 
and the bottom would be the top part of this band. So it's basically going high to low really quick and then up to the top and then back down to the bottom. So you get a kind of whoop whoop sound. And that is pretty much that. Oh, they've got a noise filter on. Just doing a little bit of white noise just to grunge it up a bit. And that is the, the main sound of the bass line. Um, and if you look at the start of every bar, I've got a longer note that runs and I've just got three different variations on it. So that version, that version which is the same but a little bit more resonant and the LFO is slower and that one's even less resonant but with the slow LFO. And if we look at that original patch, this is the same sound. So it's based on the same sound as the main sound that we just showed you. I've just got a different LFO um, thing on the coffee. It's actually a different filter on here. So comb filter. If we look on that, I think it was a low pass filter on the other one, right? That, that's just a low pass filter. We've got a comb filter on here. And we're just doing some cool stuff, just really fast on and off or off and on. Um, but only only that sort of slight amount there. If you look at the blue band that goes with this LFO, it's just moving from there to there on this knob. It's not, it's not moving too far. Now if we look at this second variation. Again, it's doing the comb filter, but this is running at one quarter speed. That's running at you know quarter of a bar. So every beat is running one eighth of a bar. So every two beats. And this third version is. Again, based on the same sound, obviously. Slightly different LFO thing there. Still on the comb filter, running at 1 8 again, but a different part of the cutoff there. Now, I could have kept the same sound and automated loads of stuff, but just have three, in <laughs> three instances of serums, fine. That's probably why the CPUs died on this track. And uh, we've also got these sounds here, called bass downs, which go at the end of the line. Just sell all those on their own. See what these do. So again, that's based on the same sound. And we're back to back to the low pass filter and back to here. Um, and there's a different LFO running on the low pass filter. Really fast again. It's like 16 there. And we put uh, set into mono and made the portamento glide really slow. So, and then if you look at the MIDI for that, I'm overlapping the notes so that it forces the uh, portamento to happen. And it's just three notes. You know, nothing too complicated with, this, with the patch. Um, uh, if we look at the EQ on these bass sounds, I would imagine, yeah, we rolled off the bottom, boosted the top a little bit on that one, um, and these will all be roughly the same. Uh, they, they may not even have any EQ because I'm, I'm sending them to a group called Midrange. And uh, we look at that group, this will be where the EQ stuff happens. So yeah, rolling off the bottom, really boosting the top there to, to make them crunchy. And we've also got track spacer running, and I believe that is also triggering from the kick snare channel. Let me just double check that. And um, yeah, mid range up here. So uh, every time the kick and snare play, it ducks out those frequencies on the uh, track spacer EQ. Yeah, um, it's quite gentle. It's only doing the very sort of bottom to, you know, kind of just above the middle of the mid range at about 35, 36%. So it's not doing loads, it's, it's fairly transparent. But it just helps that kick and snare really pump through the mix on this track. Um, and that's kind of it for the drop and the intro. Once uh, after the, there's a second section actually of the bass line which is slightly different. So after we've had that, those new 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 at the end. Oh, there's also this reese sound that I did um, a similar sort of thing. I think that's just some detuned saw waves. I would imagine. Yeah, so we've got two saw waves, unison of eight, quite heavily detuned. This one's kind of some wavy nonsense that I've obviously imported from somewhere, and that's just a basic saw wave. And again, we've got the 
Portamento glide. Fairly slow to get that nice. You know, cool slidey feel. But yeah, layered up with that thing we call bass downs, they sound kind of cool together. Sort of like a bit sort of pendulum-y maybe, drum and bassy. Uh, but yeah, the second half of the drop actually switches to a different bit of bass line when the vocal comes in. And we'll just listen to that together. It's not that much different, it's just the MIDI slightly different. If you look at the MIDI for the main bass line, it goes, it's a rising bass line up um, through the semitones, whereas this goes up and then down um, over two notes. Well, two over one semitone, but it's two notes, if you know what I mean. And that is kind of it. The vocals just, some, some of the vocals from before just chopped up in a different way. After the drop, back to a musical bit, so we're back to our pluck sound. But after the first eight bars, I layer up a grand piano, and um, we listen to those together. Some quite interesting composition stuff going on here. So, So we solo just those pianos, you'll hear what I'm doing. If you look at the, the MIDI for the first half, so the chord, the first chord is root note G, and the chord is actually quite a, quite a freaky one. It's D, D, G, A. It kind of matches the stabs a bit. And then we're going to the bass note there, and the actual chord is... So it's not actually, you would expect that for a, um, a minor, uh, A sharp, um, major. But I'm actually playing, if you look, look at the keyboard, uh, oh sorry, look at the piano roll. So you would play those three notes. We're actually playing the C instead of the D. On the second chord we're talking about now. So, oh, sorry, uh, where are we? It is F, yep. Yeah. That would be the chord you expect for that root note, but we're actually playing. And then our third chord is uh, down to a C, and the chord is actually a D, a G, and a C. So in reality, we're playing again. It's kind of kind of a, a strange jazz chord. Um, and then the last two chords, I think, are just straight. So it's. Maybe not. Um, yeah. So that's just the D sharp major, and uh, that'll be an F major, right? Yeah. Now, but on the second section of that, when we get to, if we listen. We do actually play the major chord that's, you know, that belongs to that bass note. And again, on the C, we play a C major. And it just lifts the whole thing over that second half. Um, and especially with the the MIDI on the uh, pluck, I don't change. So you get some cool, like, harmonic chord stuff over the top. And it just, that second half just feels lifted and kind of happier in a way than the first half which I thought sounded quite interesting as I was writing the track. There is the change now. And this feels even bigger now when you drop to the C. And then we drop down the filter again on the pluck to the 4-4 four four, and we got a really heavily side-chained 
version of our bass sound, same bass sound, where we look at the channel, I've got the Vengeance multiband sidechain on, which basically um, is a envelope that plays and ducks the volume with that envelope. So you can actually see what it's doing to the waveform there. And it's the multiband one because you can do separate things for your high band and your low band. You have a split down here. Um, whereas we've got nothing going on, on the high band. So this section here, um, on the, f the frequency range, down to about, what's that, about 6,000, 6K, isn't actually getting affected by the envelope, but everything below is, um, which is nice when you've got a kick drum going. It kind of does that pumpy kind of effect, but it's still letting all that high frequency information through. <laughs> And again, vocals in there, and they sit really nice over those extra chord changes. And past that, do another build up. And if you look, we're letting this bass line run, this bass note run. And I'm automating the LFO rate, so it, as it goes on over time, it will speed up. And then, there you go, and another one, and another one. And then the mute, and we're off again. What's up? And the second drop is kind of almost similar to the first, I think. I know, the second drop goes straight into the second half. Basically, the bass line is reversed from the first half, so it does the, the up-down bass line for the first 16 and the second 16. We go into what was the original drop bass line, but with the vocal over it. Um, and it's just a reverse of the first drop. And then the outro. Back to some music. And we've got the filter pluck coming up. And then the outro is the really choppy bits of vocal, pianos, plucks filtering down. And then just a big chord, piano chord at the end. And that's kind of it. There's not really anything too complicated going on there. I think by now, if you've been watching these videos, you know that. I'm not a big fan of overcomplicating things. So if we look at the vocal, there's a vocal group. This is one thing we haven't looked at yet. And um, I'm rolling off the bottoms. I've also, um, if we look at this, uh, where are I? Sorry, I've missed it. Right. If we look here, and we are using the vocal as a trigger for the track spacer on the pluck sound. So basically when the vocal's playing, it's ducking out some of those frequencies on the pluck sound, which just helps the vocal cut through over the top of that, because they share quite a lot of um, like sonic information, really. Um, so doing that just helps that vocal cut through the mix. But on the, on the vocal, I've got this stereo delay, which is just doing my um, sort of cheap stereo widening effect. So basically the right channel plays 25 milliseconds after the left channel to give you that impression of extra width. I'm using uh, the glue compressor on the vocal. That's just to, to, just to smooth us any peaks and, you know, that there might be and bring up some of the lower bits of vocal. Um, again, nothing too exciting though. You look at the, look at the settings on that if you want. It's not doing anything massively exciting. Um, we've also got, this reverb here is built into Cubase. And it's just a whole reverb of, uh, there's no pre-delay on it, so it's just literally a tail. And uh, quite a low mix on there, actually. So it's just, just giving some nice warm reverb. And then a built-in Cubase delay on the beat, like on the one fourth of a bar, every beat. Quite high feedback, uh, cutting off all the low end. So once the delay starts, it's quite thinned out and the mix quite high on that as well. So it's quite, quite a reverby. Delay vocal. And that is pretty much it. So you put all that together and this is what you get.
Well, there you go. If you've got any questions, drop me a line. You find me in the comment section here. Find me on Facebook, find me on Twitter. Um, yeah, if you like the video, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel so you know when I'm uh, uploading stuff. But until next time, see ya.